It's quite marvelous that we have a passion, that we are not purely made out of aggression, some kind of saving grace that we possess, which is fantastic. We should be thankful to the Great Eastern Sun vision. Without passion, nothing can be experienced. Oops. Nothing can be worked on. But with a sense of aggression that we have bad feelings about ourselves, either we begin to feel tremendously righteous and we are the only right people, or else we feel so pissed off that we'd be destroyed by somebody else. That's a very pathetic. And that prevents us seeing what's known as basic goodness that we'll be talking early on. The basic goodness, what we'll be talking on, is like a, this arrangement, which has a, its own contrast and its own togetherness, being together completely, and also at the same time, inviting and fearless at the same time too and basic goodness. And this is product of basic goodness, if I may say so. <laughs> and hangs together, no premeditative state involved, how to put this together, and just come along on the spot, basic goodness. I went up to the mountains today and trying to collect this tree, and the tree was there, just waiting for us to collect it. And I said, ah, oh, that'll do. We had to work on the tree a little bit in order to transport, but still, these expressions of basic goodness that how things are going to hang together. Things could just work like that. Basic goodness obviously involves the heaven, earth, and man qualities put together. Basic goodness of heaven, basic goodness of man, basic goodness of earth involved at once, of course. The notion of basic goodness is... Uh, some sense of generosity. And some sense of uh, bravery comes along with the generosity. And also some sense of uh, notion that whole things around like a mandala principle, whole things working with each other's elements all together. It hangs together so well. And we begin to feel that way ourselves, that basic goodness exists in ourselves. Therefore, that we are not afraid of our world. We are not depressed in our world. We feel so good. We feel good or particular artistic things we are doing. We also begin to feel further ideas. And some people have um, trying to squeeze like as if you are in a state of a constipation, uh, sitting on a toilet seat, uh, taking occasional glance to your toilet tissue, wish something will come through. <laughs> and it, there are some artists that will begin to do that. And the result is very meek and very technical. Always rely back on the technicalities, and then trying to produce something out of it but you don't really feel good about the whole thing at all. So what we are talking here is, is like uh, the opposite of, uh, of that. Not exactly the level of a diarrhea as such, <laughs> but some kind of free flow situations in which that you have a confidence in that you can actually produce idea. You may not have any idea, any idea at the beginning, as we discussed last night, but you might have some idea and halfway through, or you may not have any idea and halfway through. I haven't touched anything. <laughs> that when a person 
feels that they, they, they run out of idea altogether. Then, taking a short break, and almost level of giving up, then the gray distant sun rises in your mind. And it is not even an idea. It is an actual thing that occurred to one's state of mind, which is connected with the generosity. A sense of trust in oneself comes through. From that sense of trust, it occurred what's known as harmony. If there is no trust, there will be no harmony. It is very well to say that everything is in harmony, that we should work with that, which is like paying lip service to the uh, something can be done about it, but nobody actually does it. Which reminds me of uh, various uh, <clears throat> religious conference I hold in various places. The first one that I experienced when I was in India, there's a Harmony Conference in New Delhi. And then there were little Harmony Conferences um, taking place in California. And invited the rabbis and the big shoes, priests, <clears throat> and the whole gang. Everybody's talking harmony. Well, at the time they didn't fight on the spot because they're talking about harmony. But there's no result at all. Nothing had happened at all. Absolutely nothing happened. They came into the conference as they are. They left the conference as they are. They're going to go back by saying that we took part in the conference of harmony. Therefore, our organization is greater now. But because what? That's very sad. And, and it is a verge of setting sun. Even the primitive setting sun, not even sophisticated one. <clears throat> the harmony had to be related with some sense of lusciousness, richness, which is one aspect of harmony. The other aspect of harmony is a sense of spaciousness and openness. The sense of lusciousness of the harmony almost have qualities of Jewish mother. A plentiful, rich, lots of stuff on the table, so to speak. And the qualities of the uh, openness, spaciousness, It's like a Japanese home where things are very sparse and no furniture, no big furniture, no Victorian furniture, just mat. And you even, when you sleep, you sleep on a block of wood or even stone used as a pillow. Those kind of two harmonies, uh, the Jewish home and Japanese home, could put together <laughs> quite conveniently. which technically here is called the Shambhala home, or the Great Eastern Sun home, can put together. And your work of art could be the same thing as well at the same time. <clears throat> when there's that kind of harmony takes place properly, fully, then there's some kind of joy taking place. For the very reason that you are not struggling, just purely create a harmony alone, but you are also creating enlightened society. And enlightened society can only exist on a sense of harmony 
and inquisitiveness and all the rest of the things we discussed before.